guys. So today we're gonna to talk about different types of implants. And this is a big topic as part of your first consultation with me. We talk about what implants are suitable for you, what types there are, but I thought it would be a nice video to just kind of introduce you to what's there so you're a bit familiar when you come in for your first consultation. So the main question, first of all, is always round implants versus teardrop or anatomical shaped implants. So this comes down purely to shape. And you can see here in front of me, I have a round implant. So on the table, obviously it looks round. It's got a round base and it's got a dome. That's your stereotypical implant shape that you'd recognize. This is a teardrop or anatomical implant. And again, this one has a round base, although you can get some with an oval base or an oblong base. But when you stand it up like this, you can see why they call it a teardrop shaped implant because most of the volume is at the bottom and the point of projection is lower down as opposed to a round implant where the, the maximum point of projection is right at the center of the implant. So for the most part, round implants are suitable for pretty much everyone. Teardrop implants I very rarely use, only in special cases where the anatomy calls for that. And where that might be is if your nipple to crease distance, so the distance between your nipple and the fold under your breast is very short. Now, if you can imagine putting a round implant in a breast like that, either we have to lower that crease significantly so the point of maximal projection is at the nipple, or we have to put the implant in at the crease and that causes the nipple position to be too low. So there's a couple of reasons why you would use a teardrop over a round implant. Now, some of the risks of using a teardrop implant, I guess the main risk really is rotation. So again, looking at this as a shaped implant, in the body, if it turns like this, it's obviously gonna distort the shape of your breast and the only way to fix that is by going back inside the pocket readjusting that and tightening the pocket up. Now, if a round implant rotates within the pocket, it makes no difference at all because it's the same shape all the way around. For that, now, for that reason, teardrop implants only come in this micro-textured shell, which provides a little bit more grip than some of the other shells. And we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, when it comes to teardrop implants, the other consideration is the look that, that patients are after. So if you want a lot of upper fullness, that teardrop implant's not going to give it to you. It's certainly going to address the nipple position and the lower curvature of the breast, or the, the under boob, if you will. But if you want that upper fullness, you generally have to combine that teardrop shaped implant with something like fat grafting, where we take fat from elsewhere on the body and inject it into the upper pole of the breast to give that fullness. Now, it's never gonna be as full as a round implant, but again, these are sort of limitations of the anatomy that we talk about during the consultation. And I guess in some cases, you have to come to a bit of a compromise on the expectation that you're after and how the implant shape specifically is going to affect that, okay? So I'm gonna move on now to talk a little bit about the different shells. So I'm gonna take that teardrop implant, move it out of the way. We've still got our round, as I mentioned before, micro textured shell. This is a bit of a rougher surface, provides some grip uh, to the breast. So where I place it is generally where it's gonna stay. It tends to hold its position the best out of the other implants that I'm gonna show you. Now coming in here, right next to it, you have a smooth shell. Now smooth shell implants were very, very common Early on, they were the first types of silicon breast implants developed, and this is back in the 1960s. The wall of a, or the outer shell of a smooth shell is very, very thin compared to the micro-textured implant. You can actually feel the difference. And so I think early on, when breast implants were first becoming popular, the rupture rates were much higher with a smooth implant. So that's one of the risks of a smooth versus a micro textured or textured implant. The other risk is similar to what I mentioned before, where you have 
that displacement issue. So that rough implant's gonna grip to your tissues a little bit like Velcro. That smooth implant really doesn't grip too much at all. And over time, especially if we're going under the muscle, with the movement of your pec muscle, it's gonna move the implant around that can auto dissect the pocket or make it bigger. And that leads to lateral displacement, potentially bottoming out, potentially implant flipping where it flips back to front. And so, uh, so we've seen some of this too in patients who have had smooth implants for a long time. Now, I'm gonna bring in another type of implant here. So now we've got three different surfaces. These are all still round implants for comparison. So again, micro textured, smooth, and this new one, which is called nano textured. Now the nano textured shell has only been around for about 10 years now. It looks smooth, it feels relatively smooth, and it also acts like a smooth implant in the body. If you look at it under a microscope, there are tiny little textures, and so the texturing, not nearly as rough as a micro, which is why it's called nano textured. Now, why choose this one over the other two? So there's pros and cons, again, for everything. With the nano textured implant, it's been found that the capsular contracture rate is the lowest out of the three. So I'm gonna put these in order of capsular contracture. Now, that risk is roughly 2%. This one's about three. And with a smooth implant, that capsular contracture rate's about six to 10%. Now keep in mind with capsular contracture, the implant shell is not the only factor. There's three other main things that are gonna increase your risk. There's smoking, there's bleeding and infection. So all of those things are very important as well. Now coming back to the nano texture, similar risk to the smooth in that it is more likely to displace than the micro texture. Uh, however, if you look at another risk, and this is a big topic that uh, we have talked about before. I'll mention again, it's ALCL, which is anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So that's a very rare cancer. It's, a, it's not a breast cancer, but it is a cancer of the breast and the capsule around implants. The risk of that happening with the nano and with the smooth, what we know at this stage is zero. So there's no association with these particular types of implants. With the micro texture, the risk is roughly one in 30,000 to one in 60,000, and that's extremely low. Now, a couple of years ago, the Australian TGA came in and they assessed all of the implants available on the market. This resulted in a recall and suspension of several different implants, which were very highly associated with that cancer. And so what's left on the market is what I have available in my clinic, and that's these three different shells here. Now I'm just going to move these two over and I'm gonna talk about something else because I get asked about this a lot. With the nano texture, this comes with two different gel thicknesses. And I know you can't feel these, but one of them is significantly firmer than the other. This is the firm one, this is the soft one. Now they don't offer a, an anatomical or a teardrop option. So the soft gel is actually meant to emulate a teardrop implant because that gel is so soft and if you're standing vertically, it's gonna take on more of a bottom heavy look. Now you can see compared to your traditional teardrop, it's not quite as teardrop shaped, but certainly more so than the round implant. Now their firm gel, that emulates more of a traditional round implant with the point of maximal projection right in the middle. So. It's complicated and I'll bring all these out again so you can see this is kind of what we have to select. And when you come in for your consultation, I'm looking at your measurements, I'm looking at your expectation, I'm looking at uh, the anatomy of your ribs, the amount of breast tissue you already have. And that's how a plan is formulated. Now, all of that is what's going on in my head during a consultation. Not all of that is uh, reiterated to the to you to the patient and I think because it can get very confusing as you can see and that video may be very confusing but um, that's uh, an overall look at the types of implants 
the shapes as well as the shells that I have on offer. So, uh, so that guys is a, a brief overview of the different shapes and shells of the implants. Now, if you want to learn more about capsular contracture as a complication, check out one of my other videos. If you want to hear more about ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, there's a video on that one as well where I go a bit more in depth into what that is. Mm -hmm.